Hello class, welcome to Geometry Lesson 5.2. So we're going to talk about bisectors and triangles. All right, so today's uh, essential question are, what are the properties of the angle bisectors in a triangle? And also, what are the properties of perpendicular bisectors in a triangle? And our learning goal for today is to be able to use these triangle bisectors to solve problems. We'll also be doing some uh, proofs of the theorems uh, related to these bisectors. All right, so the vocab for today is include circumcenter, circumscribed, concurrent, in center, inscribed, and point of concurrency. So let's go ahead and describe point of concurrency and uh, first, so as it relates to perpendicular bisectors. So a point of concurrency is the point where three or more lines intersect. You do know you know that now, but that if you have two lines and they're not parallel then that means that they must intersect at one point, right? So we know that that's the case. Now, what about three or more lines? Well, if you have three or more lines, they could just as well intersect, you know, at multiple points, like say like this, right? You could have that uh, happening. But what we're interested in are three lines or more that intersect at the same point. And that point is the point of concurrency. That's where three or more lines agree on. All right, so when three or more lines intersect, we call those lines, those lines are said to be concurrent. So we're going to be drawing, constructing perpendicular bisectors for this triangle. So we're going to go to A, draw a circle. We're going to go B, draw another circle, the same radius. And we're going to connect where those uh, circles uh, actually meet, intersect. We're going to repeat that for B and C. We're going to use a straight edge to connect those two circles to each other uh, where they intersect. We'll do that for C and A as well, and we'll connect those two where they intersect. And what we just constructed is a perpendicular bisector for each of those sides. Now we're going to trim those off. And those three perpendicular bisectors note that they meet at this point of concurrency. And so these, um, this is a special property of perpendicular bisectors for the sides of a triangle. So if you were to construct perpendicular bisectors, remember, a perpendicular bisector are line segments that meet at a right angle and that they cut the, the line segment that they intersect in half. And so these two sides are the same. For this here, these two sides are the same. And then these two sides are the same. They cut these in half. All right, so let's reconstruct that figure from before uh, and just enlarge it a little bit. Now, it, let's say that we have a point of concurrency, we'll call it P. Now, the distance from P, it turns out that the distance from P to each of the vertices of this triangle, the vertices are the corners of the triangle, the corner endpoints here, turns out that distance from P to each of those endpoints, those, those vertices, are the same. So these are actually the same distance. Now, because they're actually the same distance, we can actually draw a circle um, over this triangle, like such. And this circle only intersects at A, B, and C, as you can see. This circle is called a circumscribed circle. Remember that a circle has a geometric property that uh, the distance from its center, the center of the circle, to each of the endpoints on that circle, or to each of the points on that circle, is the same. So this distance is the same as this distance, which is the same as this distance, which is the same as this distance, and so on. And so therefore, a circle is a perfect geometrical object to be able to uh, impose on top of this uh, triangle because it's the same distance for you know, from PA to PB to PC. Now this circle is called circumscribed, circum meaning around, scribe meaning you're writing or you're constructing in this case. So we're basically constructing a circle around this triangle, hence circumscribed circle. And you can imagine that the point of concurrency P has a special name, and that name is called the circumcenter. The circumcenter is the center of the circumscribed circle on the polygon inside. You can do this for a circumscribed circle uh, can be done for any polygon. 
uh, it's just a circle that contains the vertices of the polygon, in this case a triangle, it just has the corner points and only touches it once. All right, so this is this point of concurrency has a special name known as the circumcenter. And that is made from constructing perpendicular bisectors for each of the sides in a triangle. All right, so the circumcenter need not be inside the triangle. It can actually be outside of a triangle or it can actually be on top of the triangle itself. So there are three cases that we want to look at. But first, let's look at this case. So we have um, here a, a triangle that is that differs from the triangle that we had before. But notice that when we construct the perpendicular bisectors, so this is at a right angle, so that's perpendicular. It cuts this side in half. This is another perpendicular bisector. It cuts this side in half. This is another perpendicular bisector. It cuts this side in half. And so we have these perpendicular bisectors. If we were to extend them all the way out, well, they'll only meet at this point right here. And that is the circumcenter for this uh, example. Notice that it lies outside of the triangle. And uh, notice that the distances uh, from that point to each of the corners of the triangle, to each of the vertices of the triangle is the same. And therefore we can draw a, a circle that goes around this triangle at the same distance uh, here throughout. So this distance is the same from the center to that. So these distances are all the same. And that's my circumcenter, uh, circumcenter and circumscribed circle. All right, so let's look at the three cases side by side. So we have three cases of circumcenters. The first case is when you have an acute triangle, like in the very first example uh, in the uh, animation that we showed you. So that was an acute triangle. Remember, acute means that the angles are less than 90. So for example, 30, 45, and so on. All the angles are less than 90. And if you were to construct the circumcenter here by constructing the perpendicular bisectors, these are perpendicular and they cut this in half, then that means they'll meet on the inside. Now for this second case, this is a right triangle. So if you were to do a perpendicular bisectors for each of the sides, well, this is a perpendicular bisector, cuts this in half. This is perpendicular, cuts this in half. And then this right here, this line that I just drew is a perpendicular bisector, that's a right angle, and it cuts this in half. But notice that they all meet right where this first line starts, right here. They meet on the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. And so if, you have a, if you're given a right triangle, the circumcenter is actually located on the hypotenuse itself, on the midpoint of the hypotenuse itself, which is an interesting property. Now case three, if you have an obtuse triangle, obtuse meaning an angle that's greater than 90 degrees. So for example, let's say 105 degrees, that's what that angle is, it's greater, or th that angle is greater than 90. And so if you were to construct the perpendicular bisectors, like in the previous um, example, in the previous slide, then you know that it meets outside the uh, triangle. All right, let's go ahead and uh, combine our ideas into a theorem known as the concurrency perpendicular bisectors theorem. So to summarize, this theorem states that if you have a triangle and you construct the perpendicular bisectors of that triangle, which are given in orange here, then if you were to construct that, then they'll meet at a point of concurrency, call that point P. So if you're constructing, uh, if you're constructing the perpendicular bisectors, then they will meet at a point, they will intersect that P, and, so this is first thing, and the distances from point P to each of the corners of the triangle are going to be um, congruent, the same. So that's the second uh, thing that happens. We're gonna go ahead and prove this theorem and we're gonna prove it kind of informally. We're not gonna do it with a uh, two column chart or anything like that. We're just gonna, you know, paragraph, you know, write it out. So again, we have a diagram where we have the perpendicular bisectors. Uh, we, ha we call them Q. This perpendicular bisector is Q, R, and S. So we know. So we want. What we want to prove is that Q, R, and S are going to intersect at a common point. They're going to concur at a point, 
and that the distances from that point that they concur, that in which they're concurrent, is going to be the same from each of the corners of this triangle. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to extend these perpendicular bisectors Q and R, and we know that because they're not parallel, they're going to intersect at one point. We'll call that point P. Now at this point, we don't know that uh, S, we don't know that S actually intersects at P just yet. We can't prove that just yet. S, for all we know, can intersect here, right? Somewhere to the left of P. We're not sure about that yet. So uh, we're going to eventually get to that. But first, we know that two, two lines intersect at a point, and we'll call that point P for Q and R. Now let's draw the lines from each of the vertices to point P. And what we want to prove is that these line segments, AP, PB, PC, are all um, the same uh, length. So they're the same distance. So let's go ahead and start that. Well, we know that the blue line segment PA is the same distance, is congruent to the, the um, line segment purple one, PB. How do we know that? By the perpendicular bisector theorem. Remember the perpendicular bisector theorem states that if you are on a perpendicular bisector, which we are, we're in a perpendicular bisector Q, if point P is located on that bisector, then that means that the distance from P to each of the endpoints of the line segment are identical. And so these are the same distance. All right, so now we know by the perpendicular bisector that's true. Similarly, we know that PB, the purple line segment, is congruent to PC. Why? Because we know that point P is on this perpendicular bisector because that's what crossed with Q, right? So P is on this perpendicular bisector, which means by that theorem, these distances have to be the same. All right, so now that we have that, what we're going to say is now we know that PA the blue line segment has to equal the green line segment by transitive property. So because PA is equal to PB and PB is equal to PC, then that means PA has to equal PC by transitive property. And so now I went ahead and listed and the tick marks for the blue, purple, and green line segments because they're congruent. And in fact, I should probably draw four tech marks because they're the different from the other ones. All right, so those are congruent to each other, but not necessarily to the other sides in the triangle. Now, by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem, point P must be on the perpendicular bisector S. Remember that the perpendicular bisector theorem stated that if you're on the line on bisector, perpendicular bisector, then the distances are the same. The converse states that if the distances are the same, which we just proved, then that means that that point P has to be on this perpendicular bisector. And that's by the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. And therefore, now we showed that because of that, we showed that P is on this bisector. And we also showed that P is on not only on this bisector, but it's on Q and R as well, which means we showed that they concur at that singular point P. We also showed that the distances from P to each of the vertices are, are the same. And so therefore, uh, we're able to prove this theorem. And that square means that we finished the proof. All right, so let's look at example two, another example. Let's look at an actual uh, example in which we work out, you know, solutions rather than a proof. So point T is the circumcenter of the triangle in the diagram. Find the following. So we know that T is the circumcenter, which means that the distance from T to each of these, um, to each of the, the vertices here is going to be the same. So this distance is the same as this distance which is the same as this distance. We also know that the circumcenter is constructed, is, is uh, found by constructing perpendicular bisectors that meet at that point. So this has to be perpendicular bisector, which means that this distance has to be the same as this distance. And then we also know that this has to be a perpendicular bisector, 
which means this distance is the same as this distance, cuts it in half. Then we also know that this is a perpendicular bisector, which means this distance is the same as this distance. And so there's a lot of information that we can get just from that sentence. So now we can figure out AT. We know that AT is the same distance as TC. And we know that TC is six. And so therefore, uh, and so therefore uh, AT has to be six. So AT is equal to TC, which is equal to six. Now RC, so we'll go and label this six here. RC is uh, the same distance as AR, right? RA, because it's a perpendicular bisector. So this is going to be five as well, uh, as well as the other side. So we have RC is equal to RA, which is equal to five. Now AP, we know that this is this right here is a right triangle. This is a right angle. And because that's a right triangle, let's go ahead and uh, redraw this right triangle here. Remember that the longest uh, side in a right triangle is the hypotenuse, right? And so we know that the hypotenuse is six. We know that one of the legs is two. We just drew it from this diagram. And we're trying to figure out this side. Well, we can figure out that side, which is AP, by the way, by uh, figuring out using the Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right triangle after all. So by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, let's call this A. Let's call this C. C is always the hypotenuse. And let's call this question mark B. All right, so remember Pythagorean theorem was A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And A squared is, so you got two squared. B, we don't know what B is. And C, C is six, so we got six squared. So two squared, two times two is four. And then six times six is 36. And then uh, we'll subtract four on both sides. So we got B squared is 32. And so we're going to take the square root of 32. Remember, the, right, the only way to get rid of that squared is with a square root. And so B is equal to the square root of 32. So that's what this side is. This side is equal to the square root of 32. Now we could, of course, simplify this, but I'm just going to leave it as square root of 32 just because we haven't really taught, discussed how to simplify the square roots. You just have to know that that's a decimal that you get on the calculator. All right, so... Let's talk about concurrency of angle bisectors. Before we discussed uh, perpendicular bisectors, now we're gonna discuss angle bisectors. Angle bisectors, remember, cut the angle in half. So it's gonna cut each of these angles, angle A, B, and C in half. So like this. And so what happens if we construct those? So let's show you that. So remember, we're gonna get a compass. We're gonna draw an arc for angle A and label those points. And then we're gonna go uh, from those points and make two arcs that intersect, then connect them to A. We're gonna repeat that for C, draw an arc through for C, and then from each of those points, F and G, we'll draw more arcs, and then where they cross, we'll put a point, and then connect them with a straight edge, same thing for angle B, as you can see here. So we constructed the angle bisectors. So each of these red dashed lines is an angle bisector, which means that it cuts this angle on half, and this one cuts this angle on half, and this third one cuts this angle on half, right? And so each of the angles on either side is the same, and that's why it's called the angle bisector. Now, if we constructed this angle bisector, they meet at another point, a point of concurrency. So these three points, these three lines actually concur at a point, just like for the perpendicular bisector but it's not the same point as the perpendicular bisector, it's actually another point. So interestingly enough, and this point also has a name, we'll discuss it. So let's go ahead, so I went ahead and reconstructed that image, enlarged it, so you know that those are the angle bisectors, remember they cuts this in half, cuts this in half, and then it cuts this in half. All right, uh, and they meet at a point P. Now, the interesting property of this is that that point P where they concur, those lines are concurrent, is the same distance from, is the same perpendicular distance from that P to each of that, each of those sides in that triangle. So if I travel from here 
straight to that side, and from here straight to the other side, here straight to that other side, those distances are actually the same. And that's a very special property. Now because that's true, then that means that we can draw a circle that goes around this, just, um, just like this. And this circle uh, is said to be an inscribed circle. And the reason we can draw a circle is, remember, the circle has that property that uh, the distances around have to be the same. So this distance is the same as, for example, this distance. Same as this distance, this distance. It goes all the way around the same distance. And notice that that circle meets uh, only, it only, it touches only one side or one point in each of the sides of the triangle. And notice that the circle is not outside the triangle. The circle is completely inside the triangle and it only touches the triangle at one point at each of the sides. This is called an inscribed circle. It intersects each side of a triangle at exactly one point with no points of the circle lying outside the triangle. Inscribed, in meaning inside and then scribe meaning construction or writing or drawing. And so we have we constructed a circle that is inside this figure. And the center of this inscribed circle is known as the end center. Pretty easy to remember based off of the names. So the end center is the point of concurrency for the angle bisectors of a triangle. Now because we are dealing with inscribed circles, Remember that inscribed circles, by definition, are inside the triangle or whatever shape you're using. So therefore, the end center has to be located inside the triangle and it's not located outside the triangle. So unlike the circumcenter, the end center has to be inside the triangle itself. All right, so let's go ahead and summarize this with the concurrency of angle bisectors theorem. So it states that if you have a triangle and you construct angle bisectors, meaning angle uh, lines that cut this angle in half for each of these sides, each of these angles, then the theorem states that the angles, the uh, angle bisectors will cross at point Q, the point of concurrency Q, and the distance from Q to, to uh, the straight line distance from Q to each of the sides, the shortest possible distance, the perpendicular distance, from that point of concurrency to each of the sides in the triangle will be the same distance. And that is um, the theorem. So those are the two things that you can conclude from uh, angle bisectors that uh, of a triangle. All right, so uh, just like with the previous theorem, let's go ahead and prove the concurrency of angle bisectors theorem. So uh, first off, we know what we're going to do this with a two column proof. Now we're starting with what's given. So what's given is that we know that these are angle bisectors. So these orange ones are angle bisectors. And therefore, this angle is the same as this angle. And so that's y, x, q, given here. And we have that's the same angle as q, x, z. Okay, similarly, just going quickly to the other ones. For this one, we have x, y, q, q, y, or uh, q, y, z. And then la uh, lastly, for the other angle, we have here y, z, q, and then q, z, x. And those angles have to be the same. And so that's the first thing that's given. Now, the next thing that's given by construction is that we have some kind of point. We'll call that point q. All right, we don't know that the, that the bisectors intersect at q just yet. All we know is that by construction, we're designating this point q uh, so that uh, the distance from Q, uh, so that uh, we have a perpendicular, we have basically a, a line that is perpendicular to each of the sides of the triangle from that point Q. And this is done by construction. So this is given in the diagram. We're constructing these to be perpendicular, and that is it. So that's what's given. Now that point Q, we're going to say that the angle bisectors uh, given by line K, which is this line here, and line J. If we were to extend those angle bisectors, they'll, they'll cross at some point and we'll call that point Q, okay? So these two points, these two lines cross at Q. We don't know that 
L crosses at Q just yet. This is L right here. We don't know that that crosses Q just yet. We want to prove that eventually, but we haven't gotten there yet. What we can say for sure is that we're going to designate this point Q, which is the intersection of K and J. That's all we know so far. And, and we were given that by construction, this uh, there's these blue lines that come from Q, okay, that are perpendicular to each of the sides of the triangle. Now, now that we established that Q is the intersection of K and J, what we're going to do now is we're going to say by the angle bisector theorem, QM has to equal to QO. So because we know that Q is on this bisector, that means that by the angle bisector theorem, this distance has to be the same as this distance. So QM has to be equal to QO. Similarly, because Q is on this bisector, which is given by line J, that means that this distance QM has to be the same as this distance QN, okay? And it's important that these have to be perpendicular because this is these uh, di the fact that these are perpendicular is given by the angle bisector theorem, that these perpendicular distances are the same. All right, so now we know that QM is equal to QN and QM is equal to QO, but then that also means that QO is equal to QN because we know that QM is, is common to both of these. QM is equal to QO, QM equals QN. Well, then that means that QO has to be equal to QN. And this is called a transitive property of equality. Remember that that states that if we have A equals B and B equals C, then that means that A equals C, which is exactly what we have here. Now we know that now we're, we're going to say that point Q by the converse of the angle bisector theorem, we know that point Q has to lie on this bisector. How do we know that? Well, because we know now we established that these blue distances, which are now red, are the same. And so therefore, since QO is equal to QN, that means that point Q lies on this angle bisector. And this is the converse of the angle bisector theorem. And so that means that this is an angle bisector and Q lies on it. And therefore, um, now we know that this bisector crosses at point Q. And therefore, now we know that line K, line L, and line J all cross at Q. And therefore, we know that they're concurrent at Q based off of statement five. And we also know that the distances, the perpendicular distances radiating out from Q are the same. And so we have finished the proof. All right, so example four. So let's look at uh, the following example, uh, which we actually can do some calculation. We're looking at a diagram in which we have QP is three times X plus one, RP is five times or five times X and then minus three. Find the radius of the inscribed circle. Since they said inscribed circle, that means that we're looking at a, an end center, right? And so that, that means that P is my end center. And that means that this distance is the same as this distance because they're perpendicular distances. All right, and so therefore, we're looking at, you know, if we were to draw it, we could draw an inscribed circle here, but we're not, you know, just so that you know, I'll, I'll quickly draw one, but that's my inscribed circle, but it's not like it's necessary for the problem. It's just something to make a note of. And so now, because these distances have to be the same, uh, QP and QR, we're gonna set them equal to each other in this, in this uh, example. So we have, we know that QP has to be equal to RP, and that's because of the, uh, it's an in center. And therefore, we have three times X plus one. And we also know that it's an in center because, not only because of the radius of the inscribed circle, but we also know it's an in center because it's uh, a point of concurrency for this angle bisector. We know that this is an angle bisector, cuts this in half. This here cuts that in half. So those are angle bisectors. And we can extend that to here as well and do an angle bisector here, okay? So in any case, we're gonna go ahead and set these equal to each other. 
and then we're going to solve this equation. So we have here the distributive property, 3 times x is 3x, 3, 3 times 1 is positive 3. We're going to subtract um, 3x on both sides here of the equation. So now we're going to get rid of this minus 3 by adding it to both sides. So 2 times a number gives you 6. So 2 times 3 is going to give us 6. We can find that by dividing by 2 on both sides. And so x is 3. So now that we know x is 3, what we need to do is find the radius of the inscribed circle. So if we were to draw a circle, right, um, not a very good circle, but you get the idea then uh, each of these, this is a radius of the circle, and so is this, right? And so is this. These are all radii for the circle. And so if we figure out one of these, then we know the radius of the circle. And so we could just plug in x equals 3 into one of these equations. So uh, let's plug in x equals 3 into qp. So if we plug that into qp, uh, qp is 3 times x plus 1, and x is now given by 3, right? So we have 3, we replace the x with 3. And so now we have 3 times x plus 1. Well, x is 3, so 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And so that means my radius, which is qp, is 12. So this is the radius of my inscribed circle. All right, let's look at another example. So using the figure shown, we have a measure of angle BAF is 15. So... B A F, which means we're looking at this angle here, right? 15 degrees. So that little angle is 15 degrees, which uh, means that this other little angle also has to be 15 degrees because it's mentioned in the diagram that those are the same uh, angles. And that means that this is an angle bisector uh, because it's cutting the angle in half, the same number on each side. C B F is 52. So C B F, that's uh, this angle here, that's uh, 52 degrees, which means that this is 52 degrees because it's the same on both sides, according to the diagram. All right, and so we're trying to figure out A, we're trying to figure out A, C, F. So this is my question mark. We're trying to figure out this angle. All right, so then uh, how do we figure out that angle? Well, because we know that these point these lines concur at this point, that means F has to be a an end center, right? Uh, and so because F is an end center, and how do we know that? Well, because they concur here, and these are due to angle bisectors, right? Because 15, 15, 52, 52. And so these two angles have to be the same because um, they have to concur. Uh, and those other ones are angle bisectors, so this has to be an angle bisector. All right, so that means that those two angles are the same. Let's call them x. Since they're both the same angle, let's call them both x. And so we could figure out what this angle is. So uh, if we were to add these, these two together, that's 30 degrees. If you were to add these two together, that's 104 degrees. So basically what we have is a triangle that's 30 degrees here. 104 degrees here, and x plus x there, right? So x plus x is 2x. Okay, so, and then we can solve this. Remember that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180, right? That's the triangle angle sum theorem. So we know that 30 plus 104 plus 2x has to equal 180. So 30 plus 104, that's 134. So we'll subtract 134 on both sides. So 2x equals 56 divided by 2 on both sides. So x is equal to 28. Or 23, rather. Or no, this is 28. Let me make sure that this is actually going to be 46, rather. So not, not 56, but 46. And so then this for, therefore, this will be 23. All right, and x is 23, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for ACF, which is this angle here. And so that means that the measure of angle ACF is equal to 23 degrees. All right. Um, so it says for part B, so we know that for part A, it was the 
we mentioned, I just erased everything here. Uh, we measured that we mentioned that this was ACF is equal to 23 degrees. Just now we have a lot of room here to work with. So we got EF is 3y minus 5. And this is 2y plus 4. So now uh, we know that these distances have to be the same. How do we know that they have to be the same? They have to be the same because right here F is uh, an end center um, and it's due to these angle bisectors. So, and therefore we know that because F is an end center, these distances have to be the same from here. And in fact, from F to here on AB, if, as long as this is a right angle, the, all those three, all three of those distances are the same. And so this, the distance from F to AB is given by uh, this question mark right here, the, the line that I just drew that extends from F to that side AB at a right angle. So we're trying to figure out that side. So that is that is the unknown side that we're trying to look for. But we know that that's the same distance as 3y minus 5 and 2y plus 4. And so since these are the same, we're going to set them equal to each other. Okay, so we're going to say that 3y minus 5 is equal to 2y plus 4. Then we'll go ahead and solve that. So track 2y on both sides. Bring that down. Bring that down. This cancels. And so y minus 5 equals 4. We'll add 5 to both sides. So y equals 9. Okay, so now we know that y is 9, so let's plug it into one of these. It doesn't matter which one. Let's plug it into, let's say, this one. So we have 3 times 9 minus 5. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 minus 5 is 22. So now we know that the distance EF is equal to 22, but that's also the same thing as DF. And that's also the same as the distance from F to AB, right? So the distance from F to AB is uh, also given by 22. So the answer here is 22. And we know it's the same because uh, of that, because of the fact that this is an end center and has to be the same uh, distances from each of the sides. All right, guys, that'll do it for the video. I hope you all learned something from this. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.